Welcome back. Today, it's all about Dior. Full face of as many products as we could get. Let's begin with the primer. $120 for this primer. Wow. It has crazy good reviews. This is their Dream Skin Skin Perfector. $120. So better perfect my skin. And this is a skincare formula that works like a primer to hydrate, blur the look of imperfections, and visibly even out the skin tone. So it has shea butter, niacinamide, and then langosa flower, which says visibly age-defying effectiveness. So we'll do half of the face. And on both sides, I do have hormonal acne happening right now. So I feel like I will even see how the makeup will wear on top of a really bumpy, uneven texture. It's a very, very light peach tone. It does have a scent, but it's pleasant. It's not intense. Ooh, okay. It's actually a little bit thicker than I was expecting. It's applying really nice. It kind of has a very slight powdery feel. It doesn't have a tacky feeling or anything like that, but I feel like, I feel like it definitely did blur a tiny little bit, which is good. I'm not really seeing that it's toning my skin at all. But let's see how makeup applies on top of it. Now that my skin has settled down and the primer had a little bit of time to set, it has this really interesting cooling sensation when I'm touching and it's just kind of any kind of breeze. Like I'm feeling a cooling sensation on my face from that primer. And it does look like it toned it down a tiny bit, especially around my cheeks. You can see the difference. It's a little more even. All right, let's move on to foundation. We're gonna try out their Forever Skin Glow. This has SPF of 35, and it does say it's a medium to full coverage foundation that remains flawless for up to 24 hours with a radiant finish. So again, medium coverage, a radiant finish, and SPF of 35, and it's free of a lot of stuff. So I'm going to use a brush since this is a radiant finish. I'm assuming this is going to be more of a liquidy finish. And yes, it does say shake well. Start off with two pumps. So far, you can see it's a little bit liquidy. And I'm going to use my Michael Todd brush. I've been really enjoying it since I did the video. You can see it's blending out really easy because it's that more of a liquidy formula. So I feel like you don't really have to try too hard to blend it. So I did two pumps and it's definitely a medium to full coverage, especially with this brush because it didn't really soak up that much product. And you can see even the redness, it did a really good job at concealing the redness. I have to go a little bit over on this side because I feel like this one's a little bit more red, but everything's just very even. And the finish, it's very, very beautiful. It's not too radiant where it's just like, whoa, hold up. You need a ton of setting powder to kind of tone it down, but it's just that really nice, in between natural to radiant finish. It just looks like your skin, but it has like this really beautiful glow from within. As of right now, it's a little more even with the primer side, but it's looking really even on both sides. I'm not really seeing that big of a difference. Let's move on to the brows. This is their Dior Show Brow Styler Ultra Fine Precision Brow Pencil. $29, but just something about this formula, it's so creamy, but a little bit stiff and it just stays all day long. And it's just like a, kind of like a no try type of eyebrow pencil. You have just a spoolie on one side and then you just twist your pencil down and then that's your ultra fine tip precision brush. It's definitely very expensive. You use it up very quick for the price. I wish it lasted a lot longer. For brow gel, we have their Dior Show Pump and Brow. $29 again, and they only have colored ones. I wish they had a clear, but they have a dark brown, a black, and then a chestnut. So we chose a dark brown because who knows? Yeah, I feel like a little bit can go a long way with this product. This might be really good for those no makeup makeup days where you just want to set your brows without filling them in. But yeah, you can see a little bit of difference. It definitely added a little bit more depth to the brows, but they don't look they don't look too harsh. They're very soft. And this formula, it's really, it's a little more dry. It's not wet. It's not making the brows look crusty. I do want to hydrate my lips. And one of my favorite products by Dior is their Lip Glow Lip Balm. This stuff is incredible. I have several shades, but this particular shade, number 012, 
rosewood is stunning. So this right here retails for $35. Yes, it's a very expensive lip balm, but it just feels so luxurious when you put it on and just the color is so stunning. Your lips feel delicious, just plump. It's a beautiful, beautiful lip balm that gives you the subtle color. All right, let's move on to the eyes. Eyeshadow palette time. We're gonna play with their backstage eye palette in shade cool neutrals number two this i already have in my collection i've been playing with this for quite some time since last year and this right here each palette retails for 49 dollars. you get eight shadows some matte and some shimmers and then you do have an eyeshadow primer right here let's first prime with the eyeshadow palette and i usually just use my finger to do this and it does you can see it does have a little bit of a tint kind of just cancels all of those blue red tones on your eyelid i'm going to take this shade right here number three i'm going to focus that right in the outer corner and then bring it to like the center these eyeshadows are very blendable they're very pigmented and they wear really beautifully throughout the day next i'm going to take a smaller little brush and we're going to go in with this pink shade right here and i'm going to bring that all right here this pink shade is so beautiful and so soft and it's very complimentary it's really really beautiful let's move on to number six and we're going to focus that right in the outer corner again this just gives like a really nice subtle shimmer to the eyelid going on to number five which is this shade right next to six it's a beautiful shimmery lilac color and we're gonna take that right on top of that soft matte pink shade go back to that matte pink just make sure that's diffused all right so let's deepen this look up we're gonna take number nine which is a matte this is their plum shade. And again, we're just gonna focus this right in the outer corner. I feel like that just does such a beautiful job. For concealer, this is their Forever Skin Correct Concealer. So this concealer, it's also a 24 hour, multi-purpose, full coverage, creamy concealer that corrects and hides under eye circles, redness, blemishes, and imperfections. See, it's a little bit, it's a little more yellow. I wish it was a little more cool toned and I'm gonna use my rare beauty concealer brush for this I will say it's definitely full coverage a little bit goes a long way but it's a really beautiful concealer all right so to set my face this is a newer product by Dior this is their backstage face and body powder no powder $40 and I have shade zero neutral which is their lightest shade and what this is, it's a weightless, translucent powder that reduces shine, sets makeup, and warms the complexion. We're gonna set the concealer, the T-zone, and of course, the pimples. It just kind of blurs everything together. It's just a very interesting powder. I'm not sure if I love it since I've been using it, but I do find myself using it just because of the weather it's so hot but i feel like it kind of just melts the skin especially throughout the day when i do reapply it it just kind of melts everything together it's a very fascinating formula all right let's go back to the eyes i'm going to take a smaller little blending brush go in with number nine and smoke out the lower lash line and i'm going to take that brush that i used for the pink shade and bring that right in the little part as well and last but not least, we're gonna do this light, beautiful, silver, shimmery shade as the highlight, right in that inner corner. And then let's do mascara. I'm gonna quickly curl my lashes using the Shiseido Eyelash Curler. And I am going to skip eyeliner because I want it to be more of like a soft, smoky look. Mascara primer, this is their Dior Show Maximizer 3D Triple Volume Plumping Lash Primer. $29.50 and I have this, I already had this in my collection for I would say uh, maybe like a little over six months. I've used it probably three times max. Just something about this formula, it's not really that intense as the Lancome or the Marc Jacobs. It didn't really wow me. It's not as intense. So I feel like if you like eyelash primers, like mascara primers, but you don't want it to be too intense, this is more of like a soft eyelash primer, which definitely has its moment for mascara this is their iconic overcurl mascara $29.50 as well and this is they're saying is good for volume and curling power this wand is curved and it has those boar bristles and it looks quite tightly packed i'm gonna be completely honest with you the mascara 
I'm not the biggest fan of. It's way too finicky. The formula is really thick and a little more dry, which I prefer for a formula for volumizing. But because the brush, it's so, the bristles are not, they're not helping spread as well as I thought it would. It's just, it's really sticky and it's really weighing my lashes down, which does not look good. All right, let's move on to the rest of the face. We have the contour palette. I'm so excited because I've never used this. This is their Backstage Contour Palette. This retails for $45. I think this is such a beautiful, steady palette and we are gonna go in with my brush and we're gonna take this shade right here to contour. It's nice and pigmented. It looks like it's having a really easy time blending. It looks a little more cool tone in the pan, but on the face, it's a little more neutral. That is a very, very beautiful contour. It makes an impact. It's not too intense. It's still quite lightweight. You can definitely build it up as you guys can see, but it's beautiful beautiful little contour palette. I'm gonna move on to blushes. This right here is their Rouge Blush. $44 and they only have, actually they have four shades. I have the shade 459, which is Charnel. I feel like it does have the slightest sheen to it, but it's just this beautiful terracotta, a little more cool toned shade. Ooh, that looks so pretty. I'm gonna use a brush for this instead of the Michael Todd. Just go right on top of that like so. Ooh, that's really pretty. All right, so last but not least, for the face, we have the Glow Backstage Glow Face Palette. I picked up both of them just because I wanted to see the difference. These each retail for $45. I'm just gonna go in with this, then we'll take this one, kind of work them together. Oh yeah, oh my gosh. And they're not exaggerating any kind of texture on my face. Ooh, very, very pretty. Lipstick time or lip liner time. We have their one lip liner. It's called Jungle Brown 532. And this retails for $31. On one side, you have this tiny little brush, a lip liner brush, and then you have the lip liner. I mean, as of right now, the lip liner, very soft, very creamy, very blendable, very opaque. I just wish they had more colors to choose from. Okay, for lipstick, this one right here, number 625. I think it's called Mitsa. This color right here, I think would look really pretty with this eye makeup. It's a little more cool toned. This beautiful like rose wood color. These lipsticks each retail for $38 and they are refillable. Makeup is done and I'm loving the final look. I look very fresh. I look very spring, it's very cool toned. It's just, it's really, really pretty. But I'm, one, I'm noticing something already with the primer. This side right here, it's not cracking. It looks really good. It looks a little more smooth, a little more even. And I feel like there's a lot more glow happening. It's a lot more, it looks like very glass-like in comparison to this side. I don't know what's going on, but a little bit right here, it looks dry and it's cracking already. So this primer is definitely doing its thing. I'm gonna leave it here for now and I'll do the first check-in with you guys really soon and then the very one at the very end of the night. Doing the update, I'm trying to do it like right in direct sunlight so you can see the texture. The primer side looks so much better. It looks really smooth. On this side, the line is really intense and the feeling like that tight, like sticky feeling. Lipstick is still on, eyeshadow is still looking really nice. Is it creasing? I can't really tell. It doesn't look like it's creasing, but mascara is not moving, so that's good. Eyebrows are still good, I think. Yeah, they still look pretty good. I think I might touch up a little bit on the forehead. I got the powder with me, so we'll see. I'll let you know in the update. Okay, so for final update, this is what we're looking like. We're looking pretty, pretty good considering, <laughs> considering. It was really hot today. Yeah, there was a lot going on. Eyeshadow is still there. I think I see a little bit of creasing right in here, just a smidge, but it looks really nice. Mascara surprisingly hasn't budged. It hasn't transferred anywhere. The only thing that's not looking really great are the eyebrows. They look really sad and I don't know, I'm just, I'm not really liking the eyebrows, especially that eyebrow gel, it's not really long wearing. And then the cheeks still look really, really nice. I'm trying to see on both sides if I see a difference. I think the only thing I will say on this side right here, I kind of feel like the concealer 
Do you guys see this? It kind of looks a little bit darker on this side versus this side. But on the no side, it looks better without the primer versus with the primer. On the primer side, it looks really dry versus the no primer. The no primer side still looks really good. Still looks really beautiful, not super like creased and wrinkly, which is really interesting. But I feel like the cheeks, they look a little more even and still look a little more exaggerated on the primer side. What else? The lip is still on there. The lip liner is still on there. I reapplied a tiny bit after dinner and it's still there. But I'm kind of impressed with everything, the longevity, especially for the face. But Dior makeup is very expensive. It's definitely a luxury investment. It's a treat yourself type of makeup. I think the first thing I would definitely recommend, check out their lip products. They're phenomenal. They're really luxurious. They feel so great. And then their cheek products, I mean, their contours, their blushes, their highlights. You can't go wrong. I mean, they're stunning. The only thing I'll complain about is the packaging. I wish they had mirrors. Other than that, check out their eyeshadows as well. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is the eyebrow. I didn't enjoy this. At first I did, but throughout the day, I just feel like it just kind of, it just, it's not doing much for me. I wish it had a little bit more hold. And then the mascara, I feel like I wanna play with it a little bit more because the lashes still look beautiful. I'm impressed with the longevity of this uh, mascara. And then last but not least, that primer. It's so, so expensive. Of course, I'm gonna keep playing with it, try it with different stuff, compare it to other primers that I really enjoy, see if I can see a difference or, yeah, I just, mm, it's so expensive. I don't know, I'm not loving it. But for now, you guys, thank you for watching and spending time with me. And I'll see the next one very soon. Bye.